Welcome everyone, thank you for joining us. We have a great show for you. Today we're gonna to be exploring why do we eat the foods we eat with Professor Campbell. Professor Colin Campbell is professor of Cornell University. He's also an author of two books, China Study and Whole, where he discusses a little bit about food. So we're really gonna get some great insight. Welcome to The Circle, Professor Campbell. Thank you so much for having me, appreciate it. This is really an interesting topic, especially during this time of the year, December. We eat a lot of food and a lot of food we shouldn't be eating. So why do we eat the foods that we know we shouldn't be eating? Well, we have a preference for certain kinds of tastes. Fat, salt, and sugar are the three major things. And so the corporations over the years, the food companies, have figured that out long ago. And so they just make foods to enhance those tastes. Uh, insofar as whole foods are concerned, uh, that means eating high fatty foods and sweet foods as much as possible. And that's what they play on. Um, and uh, there's, there's more to the story than that. But just to be specific about your question, uh, they do that. And then in turn, once we start doing that, that kind of preference sort of passes from generation to generation, as you might, as you might know. You know, we, our parents tell us, they, sh they show us what to eat, they prepare it, we go on, we tell our children and so forth and so on. There, there's change? another thing, yeah, there's one more thing I should say, and that is that uh, we are, uh, quite frankly, indebted to the food companies and the uh, government policy people, and I've participated in a lot of those kind of policy developments, uh, who actually basically shaped the message. You know, so we just hear all about those foods and presumably about their health value when, in fact, there's little or no health value involved. Kind of like the other white meat? Yeah, they say white meat is better than red meat. That's nonsense. Uh, they both can, contain the same kind of uh, protein, about the same amount of protein. They may contain a little less fat, but really it's the protein in there and the lack of antioxidants and complex carbohydrates that make them just as bad. We're talking about trivial differences at best. Interesting. Now, do you know anything, um, have you ever seen or heard in the chemical enhancements by some companies? I've heard about McDonald's or other fast foods that may put chemical enhancements to make the food more appealing. Well, they do that with those things I just mentioned. I mean, these are uh, just, they'll, they'll add salt and sugar for sure, uh, you know, to certain kind of products that they may have. Uh, salt is, is an enhancer. It's a taste enhancer. And so I think that's probably what most people are referring to. Hmm. I mean, you can put in other things too occasionally, but uh, certain herbs, but they're probably less problematic than the salt itself. Now, what is the biggest downfall of having too much of the salt or sugar into the foods? Well, too much sugar, and I'm talking about, we call it refined carbohydrates, not the complex. You know, plants are loaded with the carbohydrates, and that's where all the carbohydrates are produced, really in the plants, but um, we're talking, so and to answer your question, we're talking about sugar being a refined carbohydrate, just like white flour. Okay. And uh, that's not the whole food. That's, that, that's a nutrient taken out of context of the whole food. And where we see the really incredible health value of food, uh, we see that when we're consuming whole foods, intact foods, vegetables, fruits, grains, and so forth, legumes. And we try to mix and match that together, and you know, get a taste for it, and away you go. You don't need to add back a, a lot of that salt, sugar, and fat just to, you know, tease our taste buds, so to speak. I know a lot of people sometimes get um, fooled by what they see at the store. It says whole wheat bread. But then when you look at the label and you read it, it says enriched. Yeah, that's right. That's not a whole food then. That's right. You, you, you are right. Yeah, that I mean, the whole food is, is like, yeah, you're right, just the whole grains and, and vegetables, of course, and fruits. So what uh, does it do physiologically to us to have this enriched flour? Does it benefit us at all? Well, you know, the, the main message as far as all the foods are concerned and as far as good health is concerned, I think the main component of all of this is the, are the antioxidants. Hmm. You know, there's almost countless antioxidants, and some of them we call vitamins and and uh, in any case, uh, they kind of keep in check uh, what we refer to as excessive oxidation that can produce toxic products. So the antioxidants are really important. They tend to inhibit aging. They tend to inhibit the development of cancer and 
and heart disease and, and other sorts of ailments. So the whole foods have those things. When we eat processed foods or when we eat animal-based foods, either one, basically we're pushing aside the stuff that really matters. And we're also pushing aside, too, the complex carbohydrates. They're very important. And that's just two elements of good eating or bad eating, depending what side of the coin one is considering. Um, and uh, also, some of these foods, especially the animal-based foods, they have far too much protein and oftentimes too much fat. So that's mm -hmm. bad, too. There's only there's, um, So it's really the whole plant-based foods that matter. And, and we can cure heart disease now, by the way. I mean, it's really extraordinary. I've been in this field for more than 58 years in nutritional science, and I started out my career early on the opposite side of the coin. I came from a dairy farm, oh. and I was all about teaching and learning and so forth, you know, about eating the good old American diet, high in protein and high in fat. But then I got involved in extensive research over the years, experimental research especially in other countries as well as in this country, published a lot, a lot of papers. And my work is all supported by the American taxpayer through NIH. And what I learned was something I never would have anticipated. What's that? Well, here's what I learned, basically, that uh, eating animal-based animal foods, which I was raised on, that means dairy, to what, uh, dairy as well, eating animal-based foods or these highly processed foods, you know, cookies and cakes and ice cream, I'm sorry to say, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff uh, really is void of the antioxidants that I'm talking about, and void for the most part of the complex carbohydrates. And so if you go back to the whole food, re, you know, re-educate one's taste buds, uh, and it really, it really is very easy to do within a, certainly within a month or two. There's no question. We get to a point where we crave a salad. We really do. We crave a salad. And at that point, for anyone who has a tendency for diabetes, heart disease, or cancer, and many other ailments, uh, we can see results in seven days. Seven and days? Okay. Seven days, yes. This, oh. this, is the, this is the concept of whole because everything's working together. And, and unfortunately, in science, we tend not to work that way. You know, we tend to work with one thing at a time out of a few million things. You know, we, we make big stories out of those things. We make Maybe we make little pills out of them, too, and we sell them. And that's not what I'm talking about. I just came from the uh, Dominican Republic where, at a conference, the attendees actually were served food at the conference for seven days. Took measurements before and after. Just at seven days' time, their triglycerides and cholesterol, I mean, dropped like a rock. Really? This is a, yes, and uh, as far as heart disease is concerned, uh, my good friend and colleague at the Cleveland Clinic, Dr. Caldwell Esselton, and others, Dr. Ornish on the West Coast as well, but Dr. Esselton has done some brilliant work where he's able to take heart patients, give them a little coaching, show them how to do it. 25 years later, none of them will have suffered another heart attack. 25 years? 25 years later. I, have you seen the film, Bunny Checks, Forks Over Knives? Forks it's Over Knives, docu yes. The documentary movie yes. uh, that has had a good run. Um, it's been number one, as far as I'm aware, on Amazon for more than three years now of all documentaries. Um, that sort of lays out what I'm talking about, along with my friend from the Cleveland Clinic and, and some others, some other colleagues. And... Um, we have a new film out right now that's very exciting. Can't wait for it. Um, What's that, that called? We'll follow up as to why this hasn't, hasn't been heard before. And what's your new film called? Plant Pure Nation. My, my son, my oldest son is a director. Plant Pure Nation. Yeah, this, this is, I think this is, this is, this is something Hippocrates knew about, by the way. You're going way back now. <laughs> yeah, because he's, he, he basically said, or is quoted to have, is, is said to have said, if you, if you will, uh, say, he said this, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. Mm. So the whole medical system that we've become semi-comfortable with, at least we rely on it, is basically about pills and procedures that are treating the symptoms of disease, not treating the cause of disease. 
What I'm talking about in this case of food, it treats the symptoms, yes. It treats the symptoms, gets rid of the symptoms, but it goes back to the original cause and reverses the disease. It almost seems like the surgery and medication are allowing us to continue to indulge in this behavior that we know is reducing our life expectancy. You said it, and I happen to agree with you. <laughs> well, that was easy enough. <laughs> yeah, and it, there's a lot of money involved in both sides of that coin, too. What, what's the, oh, you mean the surgery and the meditation? Yes, of course. The medicine side, the food industry, those both have a lot of money involved. Well, while well, you're on that point, by the way, and I've been engaged in these kind of conversations, I give a lot of lectures, and, and, this, and here's a point I'd like to make. And I'm saying this is a conservative estimate. We can save 70 to 75% of our total health care costs if people just listen to this and understood it. I really believe the number's higher than that, but I'll, I'll be conservative. No, I'm, not talking about, I'm not talking about reducing uh, you know, the rate of inflation of medical me, uh, health care costs. I'm talking about actually reducing real dollars. Hello, my name is Matt, and I'm an addict. My mom was addicted to prescription pills when I was very young, before I even turned one. Are you or someone you know struggling with alcohol or drug addiction? Has everyone given up on you or your loved one? The caring staff at Elite Care understands and treats you as a whole person. We offer individual and group therapy, holistic healing such as yoga, nutrition and spirituality, medication management, and PTSD treatment. By building upon your strengths and rebuilding broken bonds, we help you begin a successful life. With our staff of licensed psychotherapists and doctors, you can be assured of the highest level of care. Elite Care is the best option for long-term rehabilitation from drugs and alcohol. Contact 888-511-0607 for more information. Let me ask you this, if I can. So let's say we have a, you said the results were pretty dramatic. In seven days, things changed. Right. So anybody right now can really improve their health considerably just by changing their diet drastically. But yes. what, would it, what would it do to a person who started from birth until 30, 40 years of age followed your diet? Well, if they started from birth and, and members of my own family, I mean, I know others too. Uh, we've got grandchildren now who are in their 20s, never had, you know, never had me or that because that ever passed their lips. They were great athletes. I mean, they one of them was all state first team soccer, for example, in the state. I mean, they were great athletes. They done well. They grew up. I mean, they, they couldn't be in better health. And that, but that's consistent. With, I, I just mentioned our own family, of course, but that that's pretty consistent with what everybody else sees too. And is it genetically? Uh, does it genetically tra transfer over to the next generation? No. It does not. No. No, no, every cell in our body, and we have between 10 and 100 trillion of those things, they can't, we can't see them with the naked eye, of course, but every one of those cells is like a little universe. Every cell in our body has a, a so-called genetic template with all the possibilities and fermentation you could, that the body could possibly imagine. So every cell can do whatever it chooses to do if the body programs it that way. And so... We have some genes we'd rather not have, maybe. But quite frankly, quite frankly, it's nutrition that controls the expression of these genes. That's what matters. And so even though everything starts with genes, you know, that's the template. Some good things, a lot, mostly obviously very good things, but just some things we not so good. We do the right kind of nutrition. We don't get the cancer. We don't get the heart disease. We don't get the diabetes. That would be wonderful. Well, that's, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry? I, I, I've been lecturing a lot in Europe lately, by the way, and, and there, uh, actually, I've uh, had the good fortune of being invited by ministries of health and the ministers themselves who want to keep the health care costs under control. We know how to do that right now. I'm really quite passionate about this because, as you know, in this country, we've had a great shouting match here in the last half dozen years about, you know, what kind of health care reform bill we should have, maybe. Mm -hmm. All the all the different parties, the only thing they ever argued about was who's going to pay the bill. 
they were arguing about, you know, who's going to produce demand, you know, by telling point. people how to well. That's a good that's, point. Yeah, that's, uh, they, they, I mean, this, this story is, is absolutely immense. I can't, I can't overemphasize it. What about drinks? Are there anything there we have to be careful of? Well, alcohol, you know, some, some of it, obviously alcoholic drinks are not the best in the world. People can overdo it. But quite frankly, as far as I'm concerned, having a bit of wine and beer or something, it's still plant-based, <laughs> you know, in a sense. Uh, we just don't overdo it, okay? I mean, we have some more specific information that, for example, that women have to be careful, especially if they're pregnant, you know, not to drink wine. I'll add that little bit to it. But, you know, just occasional social kind of a drink is okay, in my view. In our last few minutes, are there any couple of foods that stand out to you that you say, I would never have this, I wouldn't give this to anybody in my family, any, any foods yeah. like that? I'll say the same thing President Clinton said when he went on CNN after reading our book. No dairy. No dairy? No dairy. Huh. He repeated that twice twice explicitly uh, you know he, he he's kind of backing off a little bit but 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 the, and actually i was raised on a dairy farm and much of my research actually had to do with working with the main protein the cow's milk and we could take that in experimental animal situations many years ago we could turn on cancer by just simply elevating the level of consumption of that of that milk protein we could turn it off by either substituting with a plant protein or simply taking it away. It's, you, it's really a, it's a, an amazing phenomenon. What would you recommend instead of milk? Well, yeah, you, I, I suggest using that word advisedly. Most people think of milk as cow's milk, obviously. Now they have so-called, so-called oat milk, almond milk, soy milk. You know, these these are sort of non-dairy, uh, plant-based uh, so-called milks. Those are better. Uh, Pardon? Yeah, they're better for sure. Uh, I mean, they're they're plants basically, and um, for other situations, maybe if you're referring to young children, babies coming off the breast, uh, and incidentally, the most perfect food in the world is mother's breast, and uh, th that's that's good for all of us and for our children. And uh, the problem is the human species is a bit weird, because you know after weaning. Uh, we keep on wanting to drink that milk, and then we decided to get it from another species. We're the only species on the face of the earth that gets milk from a, from a secondary species. I, I, that way. I, I don't know why we don't drink dog's milk or cat's milk or something like that. <laughs> well, I know we do drink goat's milk. Yeah, we do. Well, goat's milk and cow's milk and, and sheep's milk are about the same. Yeah, oh. yeah, a little bit of differences. There's yeah, some significant differences, but not big differences. That's fascinating stuff. Thank you so much, Colin, for coming out here and giving us some really good insight. I guess the bottom line is stay away from animal-based foods and, and really focus on plant-based foods. Yes, absolutely. And if people want to get more information about how to get your books, China Study, Whole, or Fork Over Knives, where can they go? Well, Amazon is probably the best place, but they can also get it in the, uh, the rapidly disappear disappearing uh, bookstores, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they can get it there. They can get it online, obviously. And do you uh, have a website? Yeah, we do. Um, it's in my name, but uh, it's, it's T. Colin Campbell uh, Center for Nutrition Studies. But basically, we just it's nutritionstudies.org. That's the that's the uh, red address. Nutritionstudies.org. Nutritionstudies.org. And right now, that's headed up by my youngest son, who co-wrote the book with me, The China Study. He's he himself is now a physician, and, uh, and in any case, we have on that website an online course on, on this idea, and uh, that's the only course I know of that's, that offers continuing medical education credits for doctors and other health professionals. It's really turned out to be, we do that in partnership with a program at Cornell University that does online courses. That's fantastic. Part. Thank you again, Professor Campbell. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Remember, our motto is simple. Wherever there's psychology involved, we are there. See you next time, everyone.